Okay, I will basically continue what Christian talked about, uh, but from a slightly more technical point. We have two tools in place at the moment. One tool set that extracts, that walks through our source repo and generates the templates for the translators. Sort of extract the, the, what is to be translated puts it up on Poodle. Um, the big part of that tool sits over there because it's, it's a highly manual process in, at the moment. Going back from Poodle into, the, into a release is also uh, a, not, it's a highly manual process too and um, also a, a process where we use a lot of old tools. I started a project. How do I switch page? Oh, I have to find the ah. In our current version, we have that many small programs that sit. Uh, extract the sources or read through the sources, extract the templates, and on the other hand, takes the PO files, the translated PO files, merges them into the source so we can build an all language version. These, uh, <laughs> these sources are from, um, I think, the very beginning <laughs> of OpenOffice actually and they are non-maintainable. Uh, one of them is, is especially ugly, it's the one called TransEX3. It's, it's written by a guy who must have loved regular expressions. I've never seen so much code full of regular expressions, meaning if we want to touch it, no, don't go, don't go there. Um, I looked at that and I also looked at when we do a release Actually, a lot of our, uh, a lot of the time spent in a release goes uh, into, into using these tools because uh, they are not integrated in our build system. They actually run a big find over the source code, and based on on what the find finds, starts the the tools. All all translators should also be complaining because at the moment. Every module, a module being writer, for instance, uh, have from 1 to 30 PO files with no obvious relation to, to where they actually come from. Uh, the average is 9 per module, and it's, it's no fun. In help, we have 4 to 12 files per module. So... <laughs> If you look for a text, you have to look in up to 12 uh, files to find the text. It's not something very modern, at least. I started a project two years ago, when I changed foundation and a lot of other things. Uh, but we started to make a new structure for all these files, a new structure for a program that could generically extract the data and insert the data again, but in, in, in a, what I would call a modern way, being a C++ programmer with inheritance. So what, what we have made right now is a class that can do all the standard things, and then we specialize it for every type. The good thing is with this, we will have one tool that does all the job. It's maintainable, and for instance, I talked with Oliver Hallot the other day about documentation. He's very keen on doing something with help, and he wanted to transform our help files. I can do that simply by adding a new class here and saying, okay, I want to generate wiki pages, media wiki pages, out of our help system. Then I write a media wiki, inheritance a media wiki class, run it over our source tree, and I have my media wiki files. 
that's the idea of this. This is to, to bring us into the next 50 years, at least. The step status is with this, it, it is a real volunteer project. So um, it goes a little bit slow. The first step is actually to generate 100% compatible PO, uh, PO files, sorry, POT files. POT files are the template files. And I promised uh, Klopf and others to make it 100% compatible so we could ensure before we drop the old tools that we at least have exactly the same. So imp implementing that, putting this into production won't be a big bang. It will simply be first making sure we do exactly the same. And then by generating for Poodle, step two is the other way around, merging it back into the releases. At that point, we'll simply cut the old tools. Translators, nobody will see anything about this. This is a pure sort of internal mechanism. The next step is the interesting step because that's the step where we integrate it into the build system. Integrating in, into the build system means if I, as a developer, I add a dialog to in whatever module with some strings. I can just hit make and it will generate the template for me immediately just for my little local chains and not for the whole big thing. So we, there's some technicalities how we are going to do it. Then a nice thing for translators is you'll have exactly one file per module. So it will be a lot easier to relate the PO files to where is it actually in, in this big chunk called LibreOffice. And before any, anybody starts, we will, of course, supply a script to convert all the old translations into this new structure. So at one point, I guess it will be 5.4, uh, we will simply have a new structure in, in Poodle, a much cleaner structure. Now, to facilitate this, we are also working on, on a slightly different project. It's a sidetrack of, of the first one. Actually, it came, came from the release engineers being a bit lazy. <laughs> we are automating right now the way from Poodle into the source code. We, are take, we, we have a script that is currently in review status, I'd say, that takes the Poodle every night, translates uh, it into PO files, and prepare it uh, for being inserted into the repo. It is still being, I think it's correct to say, in discussion how frequently we will update the repo. But the big thing about taking the things out, generating whatever we need to put it into the source tree, is done automatically. And seen from a release engineer's point of view, it will reduce the time it takes to make a release by a factor, by, by quite, quite some things. For you, it, sorry? Sorry, night UTC, yes, sorry. <laughs> oh, I forgot that. That's, that's a goodie, I have to remember that, yes. Night, night European time, but it doesn't change the repo. But it means that we have the files, if somebody wants to do a local build, wants to test something, a translation, we can provide the PO files and you can insert it into your local build automatically. So translate something, the day after, be able to test it in your local build. Should be a little advantage. Uh, then we have something about how we update the central repo. There are some concerns if we do this daily that the uh, 
central repo explodes in size. So that's why we discuss whether we do it daily, weekly, or I think right now, Clough, we, we talk mostly about weekly. The same script can actually do the opposite way too. So if you, we have a local language developer who sits, makes a wonderful feature for LibreOffice, adds a new dialog box, he can actually send up a template and we will be able to upload that template into the master. This is not for, for at the moment, 550, 5.1, it's only for, for master. But there we will be able to upload the templates more or less on the fly if we want to. Tra you can translate it and the day after actually see what you have developed in your own language. My goal with this is actually to make for you a, a, as, as local communities to be able to see your development within a maximum a couple of days in your own language. So you can go out and present it to the businesses, to the schools or whoever you have. So that, that is the base goal of this project. And uh, yeah, I don't have too much more to say, except <laughs> I need volunteers helping me. <laughs> doing, doing this uh, alone, at least the program alone, is, is quite hard. And I, uh, especially at the moment, need people who volunteer to do some testing on the PO files we have generated. So that, that's my... Yeah, uh, at the moment, for instance, I generate PO files automatically. Uh, and I need some, somebody to go in and, and verify. I, ha I can read some of the languages, and there are a couple of the languages, especially those with Unicode, to be honest. I can't read them. So I'm not completely sure that I do the right thing. I think I do the right thing, but it would be nice to have somebody who said, Yes, it is still correct before, before we set it in production. <laughs> it mean, means, yeah, take the PO file, put it in your local build and try it. Okay? The target date at the moment is Christmas. But, uh, yes. <laughs> To be honest, I said in February, the, uh, February the target was this conference, so... <laughs> <laughs> Questions? <laughs>